So let's take the Blackhawk 2 series out for some test of not only the follow mode, but obstacle avoidance while you're doing the follow mode. But what if we go between the trees like this and go through a path and see if it actually gets caught on a branch? Well, that's what we're going to do today. So let's do it. First, we're going to take it out. We're going to do a bike ride on the road, see if the active track actually follows us. Then, of course, we're going to go across some contrasty areas and see if the active track loses us in the contrast. And then we're going to do the obstacle avoidance, the ultimate, the obstacle avoidance with the active track and with some overhanging branches and some trees and things like that, some shade, some contrast, see how it does. And do a follow me on this thing, see how it goes. Going to run down the road here a little bit. There's some trees on the side. We'll turn on the obstacle avoidance. Uh, we're using the uh, Blackhawk 2 Pro just to see how that guy does here. We'll uh, give that a shot. And then we'll try just a little bit of a trail and see if it uh, loses us or not because I have a feeling with the contrast is gonna be really, really important. It's really tough to make the contrast work. So let's just see how it goes here. Let's just start this up, see what happens. All right, perfect. So now let's go ahead and uh, do a follow mode, see what it looks like. Okay, so we have uh, two different types of follow mode. We have a follow mode, which is from the satellite, and then we have the active track, which is really nice. And the active track, of course, follows a person, so you can actually draw on the, on the screen. So it was pretty nice in that it was tracking on the nice pavement surfaces. It seemed to do a pretty good job, although sometimes it seemed to track my shadow more than my body. So it seems like it was looking for the contrast more than it was really looking for the shape of myself or a person, things like that. But it did do a pretty good job. It never lost me here uh, on my route. And it was really hot as well. And I know a few of you have asked me uh, how the heat tolerance was on this because apparently uh, Hubson did have some issues in the past uh, with the drones overheating, especially the mini model. Uh, so I did check that and it was really hot. It was close to 100 degrees sometimes. Uh, so I, I didn't have any problems with it overheating. Yes, it seemed to get kind of hot to the touch but I never had an issue with it causing a problem, either uh, image problem or anything with the operation, things like that to where it overheated and had to stop or anything like that. Seemed to do a pretty good job and was pretty consistent. So in this sequence, I'm going to go through some little windy path here with some trees, some dark areas, going to go through some dark areas to see if it catches me. The point of this one is to make sure that if it's going to follow us kind of around in an arc rather than just following us straight behind, because straight behind is probably one of the easiest things for it to do technology wise. Uh, so we're going to make sure that it can go around a path, maybe hit a little bit of contrast, things like that. Okay, so it doesn't like that. It, uh, it's hanging up here, as you can probably see, but it uh, loses a little bit of dynamic range. It's not very good with that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start it again here and uh, go around the corner. Doing a good job navigating the corner, it's looking all right. Let's see if we cross the grass here. I bet it's gonna lose me if we do this, but uh, let's try. See what it does with this. Wow, honestly, I'm surprised it went across that grass. I didn't think it would do it. 
but it's still tracking my shadow. back where we started so I'm doing the obstacle avoidance test during the follow mode here and we're gonna see what that's gonna do and you can see here that I'm doing this on an electric skateboard uh, not only just to see if it'll follow but of course also I'm doing a review on the skateboard now I'm not gonna do that in this video but of course if you want to see how that goes uh, see if I fall and break my leg or not uh, go ahead I'll put those links up here so you can go check that uh, skateboard video out as well it's pretty cool a company called Basecamp and it's a brand new kind of beginner skateboard. It's called the F11. So go ahead, check that out. So let's get this going now in the follow mode and see how this thing does it, avoiding trees. Uh, this is the latest firmware, just so you know. I updated it right before I came and it did have some updates and some people said it had an update to the follow mode. Previously, it struggled to pick me up if there wasn't an exceptional contrast. If there was, you know, any light and dark shadows, things like that, it would kind of lose me. So we'll see if it does a little better now. I'm gonna go through this path. If it just starts failing, that's the end of the test. Of course, if it does go through some trees, pile on the ground, well, I guess I'll be sending it in for repair and we'll see. Now all the way when this was behind me, I kept looking over my shoulder and it was doing a pretty good job. Though there was a few branches that it came between and it just missed them. Now I'm not exactly sure in these situations if this obstacle avoidance is really this good. There was a dead branch hanging below, there was a branch hanging above, and it split the difference and went right between them. Now my guess is if it really saw those, I would have heard the obstacle avoidance beep. And I didn't hear it beeping very much. I did hear it blip once in a while, but not active. So I think it was just lucky that it flew right through the middle of these. I guess that's good, we'll take that. And again, it did come on once in a while. The obstacle avoidance did pop up, but I expected it would come on a lot more. Now, maybe it wasn't big enough obstacles. Again, that's one of the things that's going to catch us as operators of these drones is that the obstacles are so small, a branch, it's enough to take down the drone, but it's very difficult for them to see. Even some of the drones that are really good at this, like the Skydio drone, for instance, is really good at following. That's one of its main things. It will still hit wires or small branches hanging in the way. Uh, so unless your obstacle's big enough, it's kind of unrealistic to expect that any drone, especially one here that's not the top of the line price, is going to be able to catch those. So it's kind of, I'm not going to give them a pass. I would love to say that it caught every obstacle, every single branch and leaf that was hanging in the way. However, I realize it's a really difficult task. Now, if XO were to come up with a way, an algorithm, software, camera, some way of detecting these, I mean, they would kill in the market because everybody wants to run through trees and not crash their drone because you crash the drone, you end up on the ground, thousand dollars down the tubes just like that so of course they would really do themselves a favor if they could figure that out but I think it's easier said than done okay so there sits our mini here uh, if you can see this uh, I hope it hit a uh, soft landing here but it did catch uh, the tree branches right up there so uh, obviously the uh, follow mode was pretty good but the obstacle avoidance uh, wasn't as good as I had hoped so one good thing was this is that there was no real damage that I could tell uh, the arm just folded up and it fell in a, a good landing spot on some nice weeds so it didn't crash anything really bad it didn't damage the gimbal it didn't hit the camera or anything like that it was a, just a tiny scuff on a prop uh, so the uh, leaf that it hit uh, was soft enough so there was no damage once I recalibrated all the errors went away I didn't have any problems at all uh, restarting the drone and flying it again. Of course, make sure you guys leave me your comments below and uh, I'll answer those and we'll send them on to uh, XO if you see anything that you want changed or updated or if you have questions up. We're going to follow up with some smart features, things like that, just to make sure that everything is doing. But again, there's so much that I don't want to do it all in this one video. We'll come back and we'll get that in the next video. I did have a video that goes through all the different features and the prices on that. So make sure I'll put that up here so you guys can take a look at it. With that, I'm going to end this video 
And until next time and next video, good flying. And I tell you, all gimbal covers should be this easy to put on. They really should. Line it up part way, snap it on, and good to go. Engineers, kudos on this one. I don't give you kudos on very many things. That's a, that's a hit. Now the same guys who did this design need to go visit the EXO Mini Pro. Yuck, not good. Same guys who did this one need to go talk to the guys who did the one on the EXO Mini Pro. Not cool.